Right. I, I, as a last minute thing, I dug up the old theme tune, but I can play <laughs> it, but you guys aren't going to hear yeah. it, nor can I be bothered to actually <laughs> uh, pass it through anything. So there's good, like, basically, yeah. we can start the podcast, I'll put the theme tune on, but um, I, I, I can't really, I'm not in a position to, I could mute you. No, I can't. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to play the theme tune, and in about like 30 seconds, we'll crack on with it. Okay. So, hooray. Sure. Oh wow, I've got James's bit on the end there. Okay, cool. So you guys are going to have a treat when that comes out through properly. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the sort of the first episode of the relaunch of the podcast Chronicle. Um, if you don't know what that is, don't worry. Just listen to it. You'll work it out as you go along. Um, but it's it's a kind of a thing that that me and these kind of folks did. So let's start off with introductions. That's probably a good place to start. So since Will's on the screen right now, that's Will. It's Will. He, I am Will. You could probably tell quite a lot about his personality from the picture that he's uh, sitting next to and the chair that he sat in and the fact that you're wearing some very nice headphones. Um, I so, mean. They're relatively nice. They're also like six years old. Oh well, I think mine are as well, actually. Uh, just out of curiosity, now those uh, those those pictures, did the anime characters <laughs> themselves sign them, or how did that work? Oh, well, Chris, it's not it's anime. Critical role. Critical role posters. What? These are these are the signed posters that you got for going to the live shows and buying VIP tickets. Which is an expensive thing. I should probably not do. Curators, you and nice. yet I have done for three years now. Well, you know what you like. Wow, wonderful. Oh, if oh. they if they came, did live shows in the UK, I totally would. Oh. I think I've done one, and I was working. Bravo! Yeah, All right. they have done one in the not where I live place. The not where you live place. Great. Oh, and uh, who's the president no, of that? President, my boss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well, anyway, since Jenny is uh, on the screen now, um, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> who are you? I'm Jenny. Um, turns out I'm a very written so that. I was going to comment on the posters if you didn't, and lo and behold, you commented on the posters. So, critters. We didn't do a good time of it. Mm-hmm. Um, great. <laughs> um, and you do stream? Uh, you did stream? Uh, sometimes. Legendarily? Sometimes when, yeah, in Myth and Legend, in a time of Myth and Land of Legend, something. Yes. something. Uh, uh, well, yeah. but, I won't make um, promises I can't keep. Um, no, that's, that's I fine. do YouTube. Oh, you do, don't you? Yes, you're getting back into the YouTube. So you are on YouTube, you took it home to Jenny. Yep. But on Twitch, you're classy librarian. Yep. And, um, and of course, uh, for everyone listening, watching, etc., I'll make sure to put uh, links to all this stuff down in the description below. I'm sure Will's got a link he can throw in there at the end as well. Um, okay, so this smiley chappy is Matt. How's it going? Now, you have, like... <laughs> more YouTube channels than I do at the moment, I think. <laughs> Probably, yeah. In terms of collaboration and stuff, yeah, I do. I've got Polka Dots. I've got this My Name's Main channel. I got collab channel called Matters of the Mon Dave. The Matters so of the Mon Dave. I'm, I'm a fun person. Yeah, I'm, I'm just up to a lot. I keep myself busy. Wonderful, yeah. And, you, I mean, you, you, you pop by on the stream on this on this channel on, on the... We're streaming with both Twitch and Project Podcast Project Chronicle. Anyway, at the moment, you, anyway, you you drop yeah. by my streams a fair 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 whack. So um, yeah, I, I hope do. that at least some some people know who you are. But if they don't, then they're bad people. So um, that's okay. Mm -hmm. We're just not them. They don't have they don't have to be here if they don't want to be. <laughs> um, they can be bad people if they want to be. They can be bad people. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Can, uh, with all the freedoms that they can have, they can choose. They have yeah. Freedom. This is yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, and then cracking on to Falcon. Um, 
I mean, you're not allowed to tell us what you do because it's uh, some sort of uh, secret agent occupation or uh, <laughs> such thing. So, um, um, yeah. Tell us something about you that doesn't involve your occupation. And doesn't involve those uh, bodies that you've yet to bury. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, no, what? No, I don't know. <laughs> no, I work for a, a small entertainment company in the Lake Buena Vista area, and I, I work most of the time. So I, I used to be around a bit more. Um, well, you're still around a fair bit. Um, well, yeah, a little bit. But look, I think there was maybe like a year or like we've gone like eight months at a time where I'll just like be MIA from this. So, mm -hmm. so uh, now am I right I in thinking... That. <laughs> Am I right in thinking that you are probably one of the few Project Chroniclers that have yet to air your grievances with Game of Thrones in, on, on any of our bits and pieces? Yeah, I never got to any of the Game of Thrones uh, things that we did officially. But, I mean, obviously you and I have complained about it to each other. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, yes, you did, yes. We are about Game of Thrones, but not like in an official sense. Not, not officially, Your Honor. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the public has no concept of my opinion on Game of Thrones, and that's that's fine. Mm, yeah. All right. I'm going. I'm going to try my best not to talk about Game of Thrones on here because I know everyone's sick to death of it. But it really, it's to me, it's, it's the tragedy of our time. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't I, disagree. You'll get your two cents in, though, even if we don't talk about it a lot. <laughs> Great. I mean, so, I enjoy the fact that escape is so strong that that's the try time. <laughs> I, that's that's escapism to the T. Yeah, it's uh, hmm, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm just I've just made myself sad thinking about it now. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, I, I thought um, actually as as part of the the introductions, I'm Chris by the way, uh, and I'll put my <laughs> links down in the description, I guess. Um, so, um, I saw actually, interestingly enough, the thing that kind of got me started on this, uh, or on, on this re sort of re revisiting, reopening it is a vid. I don't know. Do any of you guys watch boy in a band? No. YouTube channel. Nope. It's a great channel. I do nope. recommend you guys check it out. Um, I think so. he's, he's part like, well, I, I think if you just, yeah, give, give him a look, you'll like him. Right. Um, so basically, he did a video talking about the various heavy metal genres, and it it sent me down a rabbit hole that is wonderful in every way, like how every country in the world has like a genre of of heavy metal, and it's a it's a it's a really in a, in a way quite a unifying genre of music. Like you just pick a country and have a look at the the metal scene there. And it'll tell you something a little bit about the country itself. And sometimes it'll tell you if there's like something that they're rebelling against or if there's something that they're celebrating or something like that. But it's all this this sound that sort of unites um, people. It's not necessarily just, an, you know, in terms of geography, but also in terms of uh, various different like skill sets that people have or various different circumstances that people live in. And it's this one thing that just unites so many different types of people. And I think that it's really endearing. But one of the genres that Boy in a Band talks about is um, black metal, which is subs which is significantly different to death metal, right? Of course, they are sort of, um, uh, what you call it, sort of like, they're, they're sort of parallel, not parallel genres, but they're linked genres in terms of that they're both heavy metal. But one of the things about black metal that is very interesting is that it's low, it's, called, it's like lo-fi by design, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, what that means is, and there's a joke running in the video itself, you're not death, uh, you're not black metal unless you recorded in Norway in a shed in the cold all around one crappy microphone uh, and that is like the death metal uh, the sorry the black metal sound oh dear me i do apologize to metal fans for just crossing my genres there. um and i the whole video i found interesting and i did a whole bunch of research um on, on my on my own as a result of this which i won't really get into now because it's just personal sort of nerdery but um but it is interesting and all the different sort of type the, do you know there's a genre of metal called mathcore? <laughs> M mathcore. Yeah. <laughs> mathcore. That's not even mentioned in the video. I got that. Um, I, I suppose that's exactly what I expect it is. 
kind of. It's a bit like uh, techno y. Screaming about Pythagoras? Uh, I, I, I'm sure there's probably some Pythagorean, Pythagorean, um, you know, bits and pieces in there. It's, 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 it is a kind of interesting genre. Um, there is um, symphonic rock, which I think you guys are probably a bit more familiar with. Uh, that's one where they usually have a, a metal band fronted by an opera singer. Uh, there is, um, of course, death metal, uh, which is. Uh, distinguished uh, separate from from black metal uh, I think the difference are things like um, and I could very like, watch me get this one wrong that uh, death metal has uh, differing tempos uh, growling vocals um, but with a tremolo guitar as well uh, uh, with uh, whereas like black metal will have screeching vocals uh, with a consistent tempo um, but also on a, on tremolo guitar and and things like that. I think I think I could very well be misremembering that one because the, the there are nuances that I'll be honest um, are, are a little bit lost on me because I'm um, not super super into it. There's battle metal, which is again what you might expect it to be honest. It's battle metal. Um, so you got all the anyway. I'm kind of I'm kind of um, uh, getting stuck in the in, in the weeds on this one. But the thing about black metal is that it's kind of crappy by design. Oh man, I don't want to say that because it's like, but that's part <laughs> of its charm. Do you know what I mean? It's called, they call it lo-fi, but it's it's you know not using high-tech equipment. It's actually it's sort of rustic. Rustic, yes, yeah, like it's it's kind of rustic in that regard. Um, and I and I kind of th- sort of thought, well, our podcast could be the black metal. Of of podcasts, you know, like <laughs> I was like, okay. Like, is like, so like, <laughs> I wasn't bands, sure like, where this was going. And you mentioned earlier, like, oh yeah, we'll talk about music. And I was like, oh yes, we're going into this sub genre of of music that you don't know much about and we don't know much about. And okay, that's what <laughs> you want to talk about. Cool. All right, we'll get there. It's fine. And then it's but that's not that was that was just just a swerve. Yeah, you, you know the actual bit. So you that, mean like his, I know I, well, I've seen his "Don't Stay in School" video before. Mm-hmm. Is that what but, you mean? Is that kind of what you mean? It's the it's the same person, but that music is just rap, as far as I'm aware. I oh. know very little about rap, uh, or I know very little about a lot of things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if any, like you're not a functioning person unless you actually true. Mm. Mm-hmm. But um, interestingly enough, the actual music segment that I've planned for this doesn't actually have anything to do with rock. So, mm. um, a- another good example actually is something called Hebacon, um, which is a oh, t- you show me this the the bad robot. Yes, yeah. yes. I yeah. think we're getting a bit of feedback, by the way. I don't know who it's necessarily from. Um, but with uh, yeah, but with Hebacon. It's crap robot fighting, right? So the idea mm-hmm. behind, uh, and it, again, this is another one worth looking out for. And if I can be bothered slash remember, I'll try and put a, a link to a relevant. Uh, is Tom Scott did a video on it. Uh, Tom Scott, another great YouTuber, I recommend. Um, basically, uh, Tom Scott was actually invited to host one of these Hebacon. Oh, okay. So uh, Tom Scott was invited to host one of these Hebacon. Um, conventions and basically the idea behind Hebacon is crap robots and they have to be crap robots in fact the better a robot is um, the, the 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 sort of the more disqualifying you know that that factor is uh, and it's like fighting robots but you know like one entry was a can of coke on a piece of cardboard uh, another was just like a, a couple of rubber bands and a paper clip um, but what does a kind of coke on a piece of cardboard do? Uh, it, it attacks other robots. <laughs> so it's like battle. It's, so it's like battle bots. How does it attack? Sorry, Falcon. Like, what was that? Does it just like shake up the can and then open it up and like ruin their electronics? Oh, that would be far too advanced. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, God. So it's so it's I, it's I like crappy go... robots versus crappy robots. Yes, yeah. that, that, like that, that, Battlebots, that. except 
I remember how bad the can one you fight each other? The one that I remember from um, the video you sent me was a Walkman CD player, but they'd taken off the like top of the Walkman CD, so it had the exposed CD, but then they'd glued a pair of Barbie legs <laughs> to that CD. So it, just the Barbie legs spinning around. That's okay. amazing. Yeah, that, that's, that's the right. level we're at. <laughs> that's a, that's that's very high tech for um for your Hubicon robot, but <laughs> but you know that's bravo. So so anyway, yeah, that's a, a really ha- ham fisted way of basically saying um, that I kind of I kind of want to make a crap podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I mean, wasn't wasn't there a special somewhere. award for Hubicon? For, um, there was a super special award for a lady who accidentally left her robot on the train on the way yes. there and was didn't that, actually I... bring a robot. Yeah. I the objective to make a, a, a bad robot that kills well or just to lose. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like the goal is to lose. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, how because... low can we? How low can we get the bar to go? Like, well, it's, it's sort of... how low? It's yeah. how how can we lose? No, it's not. Well, it's how can we win with the worst robot? That's the thing. Is it's yeah, yeah. How how low can we make the bar? Race <laughs> is, to the is this like um, is this like the Ig Nobel of robots? Like, what is? Oh, you mean the Ig? Is it the Ig Nobel Prize? Which yeah, is... yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what is the, the oh? I, I, it's like the Which it's is, the opposite of the o- Nobel Prize, right? Well, no, it's it's still like science and things, except all of it's just crazy. All right, this is like the inverse the, the idea of idea. Ideas. This is like the oh, opposite wow. of Battlebots. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. So, back so the American version of Robot Wars. The the medicine uh, yeah. prize for this year was two people uh, who did a study on using roller coaster rides to try and hasten the passage of kidney stones. Oh wow! <laughs> oh boy! Wow. Okay. Was it so like it's it's bumpy, so it like breaks them up? Hmm. I think that was what they were they were saying is like they're they're saying with the roller coasters and the kidney stones was like you're moving around a lot and it's bumpy so like it breaks them up, mm. makes it did easier it... to pass them or something. I mean, did it work? I have no idea, but they won oh, the I... prize. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter if it worked or not. They won the prize for attempting it. Yeah, it only <laughs> matters if it works for the Nobel Prize. This is the Ig Nobel Prize. Oh, okay. You, you can win just for your study yeah. being super weird. Oh, come up with some like, dumbass ideas that people actually put to study. Mm. Oh yeah, the the uh, paper is called "Validation of a Functional Pilo Something Renal Model for the Evaluation of Renal Calculi Passage While Riding a Roller Coaster." Wow. Hmm. So, I feel so, educated. The, so the only. The only criteria for them getting the prize is if they just uh, if they just conduct the study, basically. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, so it's funny. It's a very strange thing. Uh, that's that's really most of it. It's it's really simple, man. It's uh, do science get money? Like, come on. Hmm. I I don't even know if there's money involved. Well then. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, it's kind of a bit like Portal then, but real life, real life Portal. For science, real life Portal experiment. Hmm. Exactly. Right. Um. Cool. Anyway, right. That's um. Uh, Should sh- we? That, that's that's introductions, it's right? Let's so let's fun. do. <laughs> right. That let's do. I think Chris, you are yeah. succeeding. Half yeah. hour. <laughs> Your mission has thus far succeeded. Yes, great. Okay, is it crappy enough? Let us know in the comments. We oh, we are actually reading the comments, so um... <laughs> we had a thirty-minute introduction section. Yeah, it's almost longer than the main segment. Mm, I did, I did uh, contemplate putting the uh, online live comments on the screen, but I know what the internet is like, so yeah. I know better than that. You know, I know what you're. I'm looking mm. at you. So anyway, right. So the first segment, 
uh, is lovingly called the fastness report. So if you like fast things, this is the segment for you, right? So it, I did contemplate having an entire podcast around this concept, but I think there's only so much you can sort of stretch this out, right? Okay. So people on uh, Twitch will, I'm hoping, will um, be able to get updated with a little bit more information. Uh, those of you watching, try and avoid looking at the, the screen to, to not give it away. But... Hello. Yeah, you guys, yeah. Um, I'll switch back my Ig Nobel Prize tab. Mm -hmm. So don't just, look at... Okay, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll just close the tab. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't have to close the tab. I mean, it is an interesting tab. But, um, okay, so... Uh, the first... The first... Um, fastest thing, right? So... First off, guys, guess what is the fa is it the fastest land, sea, or air animal? Right. So, what's the fastest? What's the fastest? Birds, fish, land animals. What do you guys think? Just shout out, Birds shout out, an answer. Right, well, land animals probably. Oh no 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 no! no. What, what, what's what's the 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 there's the the it's a type of crab or shellfish or something that like like. Oh, oh. Are we guessing whether birds are faster than land animals and sea animals? Because I think birds are faster than land animals and sea animals. What? Okay, so I'm I'm thinking the pinnacle of all evolution, right? So the fa <laughs> what's, talking, what's okay? So you're, are you talking about like the speed at which the movement animal travels, speed? or it can the move fast? The okay, the fastest. Like, the fastest. Speed, like, so birds. <laughs> so, going to die. Like, it's going to be faster than most other things because they got rat you know? So yeah, it's the fastest. The fastest. What? What? The, is the fastest bird the fastest? Is the fastest land animal faster than the fastest bird, or is the fastest fish faster than the fastest all the others? That was a terrible way of explaining it. Okay, right. So which one out of those three categories? Okay. Is yeah. The yeah. Pick right. Pick the fastest thing out of those three categories. Which is the fastest overall? Is the fastest animal but, in the world a bird? It's be a bird. Yeah. It's a bird. It's gotta be All right. Air. Yeah. Definitely a bird. Because there's friction, and also like they can just dive. Yeah. Well, you guys are correct. That's not a correct question, or anything like that. The, the fastest, the fastest thing, in by pretty much all the major metrics, I think is. Um, is the is the fastest? So um, I think the Wikipedia thing organizes it by. Uh, well, okay. The, well, it's, I'm I'm using Wikipedia, by the way. So if anyone wants to correct me, they can sod off. Um, <laughs> so it's <laughs> <laughs> so the fastest on the list of things on Wikipedia, the fastest animals is the peregrine falcon. So hey, um, hey hooray! Ah. Which can get up to and this is a, this is amazing any a, anyone yeah anyone want to guess right so you got 100 120 was that matt 120 i think it's like a dive speed or something yeah we're talking about a dive speed yeah I, it's the fastest yeah. it can go i don't think it's 300 i feel like it's uh, more than one. i don't think it's 300 i don't know where that number came from <laughs> I'm gonna that, double. That what about me. like? I was, uh, what about? I think it's around two hundred and twenty or two hundred and forty. I think it's around two hundred. I thought it was one fifty. I'm gonna say two twenty. Two twenty. Three hundred. Whatever. Three hundred. All right. Is this present Yeah. Um. So I'm not really necessarily. Is it loaded or unloaded? <laughs> <laughs> it's um. Well, the, it, Wikipedia cites it as two hundred and forty-two miles an hour. So Matt was pretty close, oh, actually. You're only 22 out, which is, you know. That that's fast. Man. So, but 300 is not a million miles away. So th there you go. So the list of birds by flight: the peregrine falcon. Um, and I'm going to put up a little picture there. Look at that. Wow, it's it's, it looks quite really small. Not that it is. It is pretty small. It's not. It's not very big. Hmm. They just have a. They just have a. The wing. The wing pad to the size and the wings. Yeah. yeah, but uh, there you go. That is a peregrine falcon uh, and a golden. So the um, the yeah, the peregrine falcon's average diving speed is two hundred miles per hour, but its maximum air speed is two hundred and forty-two. But that's not horizontal airspeed. 
So I'd imagine that's like the fastest it gets up to at some point in the thing. Anyway, so what's the fastest fish? Fastest fish, fish. or sea creature? Uh, the thing that lives in water. The fastest thing that lives in water. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I forgot what the name of it is. It's that ridiculous shrimp thing. The, mm. the uh, mantis, the jumbo shrimp or the mantis shrimp thing that can, like, kill its prey oh, with the shrimp? sonic boom. Yeah. I'm going to go with that because yeah, it's well, like a doodle. It doesn't walk that fast, though. Right, but that's that. It kills <laughs> things really fast, but I don't know if you can count that as fast as traveling, but maybe. I, I, I don't it, think like, it's a mantis shrimp, but like, there's a different type of shrimp that, like, project, projects itself. Like they can just do like. Oh. I don't. I don't think it's a mantis shrimp. I think the mantis shrimp uses it as a weapon. I think there's another shrimp that uses it. It for does traveling. Does that count as? Does that mm. count as speed though? I think. Um, mm. I'm gonna say like it's some. I don't know. Maybe like a marlin. No. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt. Matt, 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 Matt yeah, Matt. Right. Is yeah. that right? Oh my god. <laughs> Well, I thought I was thinking like barracuda really? or something. But... It's um, yeah, it's the black marlin. The barracuda. The black marlin. No, it's not a barracuda. Barracuda is smaller than that. So the is is the black uh, the black marlin uh, is in the fish section. Yeah, the black marlin can get up to eighty two miles per hour. Although that is a citation needed statistic. So I don't know. Take that yeah, for we, what it's worth. Because we've seen Finding Nemo, and they make a joke about how his name his name is Marlin. And it's like a sports fish. Uh, oh yeah, he's a. Clown. I he's never clown. understood that joke. <laughs> I again. I uh, I oh, love. The... Like, why, why is this meant to be funny? I love... because he's re he's a clownfish and he's really he's really slow, but he's named after the fastest fish in the ocean. I that makes so much more sense. I love the picture that Wikipedia's put on. I and most notably, I love the expression. That's on his face. Marlin's get Marlin's get jumped. Can we look, at, can we look at it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, look at it now. Yeah, they they get they get massive. <laughs> like if you get it, if you get a marlin on, you're fighting that thing for hours before you get it in the boat. I saw really? this video. Chris, like, I think, I don't that doesn't even look like a. I saw this video. It looks like, like a bad part of a fish. Um, <laughs> Some people go um, spear fishing for marlin in scuba gear, so they literally dive in scuba gear with a spear gun, and they they shoot the spear into the marlin, <laughs> and it's tied to a line, and they ride the marlin, like they let the marlin drag them through the ocean, and they try to like catch it in the scuba gear. It's really crazy. Wow. Yeah, so they actually do the the fish drag me out of the boat thing. They're no, they're in the water when they spear it, and they get the line on it. Yeah. They're in scuba gear yeah, in the ocean. Stuff where it's like, the fish was so big it dragged me out. Like that, the marlin there's can a video. do that. It's, there's a video called like spear fishing my uh, my 138 kilogram black marlin off Brisbane, and the guy's like in the ocean. Oh, I think I saw that on Pornhub. That was like the fish version <laughs> of like uh, the uh, electric bull thing, where you like try to stay on. That's what that sounds like. Yeah, and and, and the he, they ride it, and there's like I'll, I could paste the link if you want to watch it later. But the guy literally is in the ocean when he spears it, and then he he hold on to it like you hold on to a, something else. <laughs> oh wow! I don't so, know. There's no comparison. The um the the uh, the horsefly can get up to ninety miles an hour, although unreliable source. What? Mm. Well, yeah. I mean, anything falling at terminal velocity technically can go 120 <laughs> miles an hour if you really think about it. Uh, there is an article called "The Slowest Animals." I'm just going to uh... <laughs> sloth. <laughs> it's just a list of sloths <laughs> and <laughs> hugs. It's got to be a freaking sloth. <laughs> God, sloth oh, damn it! Like... Oh, we should have the done a segment called the slowness report. This is so much better. Okay. <laughs> it, it would so, be like a list of like, sloths by name. 
Okay, not I. No, no sloths. No sloths. Okay. Oh, because I'd be like Barry, Steve, Martha. <laughs> like just so, all of the names sloths. <laughs> guess. <laughs> guess the speed, right? Because I, I can't, I can't necessarily expect you to guess the actual. Uh... Oh, it's got to be like it's got to be like snail or something. Oh, oh no! Or the guess, the, be... guess the speed of the slowest bird. The slowest bird. bird without stalling. Uh, I'm gonna go yeah, like, later, like a, hopping along the ground. I'm gonna go with like two miles an hour. Mm. More or less. You're not. You're not far off. It's uh, five miles an hour. The American woodcock. <laughs> so, God, they have some filthy names for birds, don't they? <laughs> Well, there's so yeah, many of them, so they got to name all of them. Oh my god. Oh my god. Do you know what some of it's... <laughs> right, so the American woodcock, also known as the Sclopax minor, sometimes colloquially referred to as the timber doodle, the bog sucker, and the hokum poke. This is not a real article. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if we don't have okay, so we have so many birds that we have to come up with more than one name for every bird because there's so many of them. The hokum poke. What the? No. <laughs> Sounds like hokey pokey. I mean, the hokey pokey. I feel like this should be like a children's TV series where like it's a family of wood and they all have a different bird name. So it's like. You know, the, 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 like his daddy, you know, Woodcock, and then what, what were the other names? Timberdoodle, Bog Sucker, and Hokum Poke. <laughs> so Timberdoodle is the mother, and Hokum Poke is the like the weird kid. Oh, what the heck? So Bog Sucker, the creepy uncle. <laughs> <laughs> it it gets weirder because I tried to find this bird by searching for Hokum Poke. Um. And hokum is a particular song type of American blues music, which uses extended analogies or euphemisms to make sexual innuendo. Wow. Great. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we both called it woodcock. What were we expecting? <laughs> so well, it's tied back hokum. to the fact that bird names are Hokum Hokum is my favorite child nursery rhyme dance song. <laughs> So, uh, the, the seahorse is the slowest fish, fi um, oh, that makes sense. Um, which swims at about 0 0.01 mile per hour. Uh, the that giant Galapagos sense. turtle, one mile per hour. You've got the banana slug. Oh, good gravy. <laughs> They're gigantic. <laughs> They're yeah, massive. They're, There's a reason they're, called they're fantastically slug. huge. I wouldn't want to find out. Oh, they're not the size of your arm, but they're still pretty big. They're about the size of your your entire palm. They are a gastropoda. <laughs> so, Chris, uh, my boyfriend's walking on the ground here trying to get my cat to do something, and he just like looks up at me and he goes, "They're British. Why are they talking in miles per <laughs> hour?" <laughs> 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 well, British British people I mean, are still backwards in this regard. It's the it's the it's the it's the forward thinking Europeans that are doing kilometer kilometers per hour. We still use the Queen's measurements. Uh, yeah, so. there was definitely some confusion when I talked to my Canadian friend because she was like, "And then how many kilometers am I like? Do you what your what's your?" Average kilometers per hour that you drive at. You mean like sixty miles? Per hour? And she's like, why? <laughs> and that's the confusion continued. Well, yeah, it's, uh... we Americans make too many stuff up. We don't even use the metric system. <laughs> Feet too, and inches. Too many, too many stuff up, indeed. <laughs> we make up too many bird names. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us go! <laughs> like four names for the same You're bird. You're innovative. We got four names for the same bird. Mm -hmm. I mean, two, two, two names for birds. What? what we bird? have four names for the same bird. 
Uh, so, yes, that's I didn't. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I, I I didn't expect the slow animals to be the the more interesting ones in in the equation. We'll but, have to do that one. We'll have to mm, do that category next we, time. Are you yeah, getting onto the hardest now? Yeah, I, I might expand the remit of the fast report to to be just you know like just just in general to be like how fast something is rather than just like the fastest of something you know just, just the speed report the, the speed, speed reports the speed report sounds like exciting and interesting i don't want to give people the wrong impression <laughs> the fast report sounds like something some wouldn't that, wouldn't that wouldn't that go with your like oh this is a crap podcast because it would sound exciting and interesting but actually not really though well, I don't want to give people the impression that we're we're fast and exciting. No, but yeah, like that's that's false advertising. You know, <laughs> this is you're supposed to be, with that swerve. This is supposed to be a crap <laughs> podcast, not a misleading podcast. <laughs> I almost said Golden Eagle. I saw a Golden Eagle on there too. Golden Eagle. So okay, so I've got okay, so the hardness report now. So. <laughs> Oh, we should have done it the other way around, hard and fast, but no, it's fast and hard today. So, this is from the wooddatabase.com, so the authority on wood. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I, uh, can any of you guys name any of the hardwoods that you think will be on this list? Petrified. Mahogany? Let's English see. oak? Matt. No, no, I don't oh, see any. Uh, Sorry, Falcon. What was that? Koa wood. No. Not like, not like oh. oak. No. So okay, so so. <laughs> I know nothing about this topic. No. What's the hardest tree? <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be completely real with you guys. I. I, I needed something for the hardness report, and I literally just typed in something like "hard" into into Be into careful. a search engine, and this is something that came up that was, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the most underprepared of the of the of the well, segments. We only have downhill to go from here. So. Oh no, no, it gets better. I, I can assure you, it does get better. The next segment is better prepared. Like I didn't basically, I I I I didn't like do the segments in order and then get bored about halfway through and no, no this is this is just literally because i said that i would do a hard report on something that's literally oh the 10 best woods you've never heard of oh okay mopane true haven't heard of that one palawina pa pal palwinia haven't heard of that one greenheart shaktavika yeah, I, I do not know wood i know trees burmese blackwood desert ironwood oh cool Pistachio? Pistachio wood, like... Like the nuts? Um... Yeah. I mean, nuts do grow on trees. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, Black locust? Covering wood nuts with... Catalog. Black locust wood? Makakuba. <laughs> Why you'll love it, this wood is uber colourful with many pieces having rich reds and oranges mixed in with darker brown and black veins of exquisiteness. Oh. Black Locust Wood is my favorite black metal band. It it sounds like a brand name of wood. <laughs> You're like, this is our special Black Locust Wood. Ah, wood we grow it exclusively in the uh... wood that's resistant to locust. Wait, 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 wait. is Black Locust Wood like a hard wood? Um, I mean, Black Locust Wood sounds like a like a themed flavor. Campbellthorn. There's African blackwood. That's a nice. That's a very rich color. Uh, the proper. The, I think the the scientific name for it is Dalbergia melaoxylon. Camelthorn. <laughs> Camelthorn. That's right. A oh, they have the scientific names listed. Yeah. So, um, and I to be honest, I doubt this has any any scientific backing whatsoever. Um. Probably. Because I mean, it's the wood, but it is the wood database. And, and honorable men, I love that they've got uh, honorable mentions: leadwood, uh, brown ebony, ipe, mopane, Burmese blackwood, and kingwood. Uh, other oh, they've got some other notes here, so we'll find out if this has completely all fallen apart now. 
Uh, hardness listings are for woods at a dried weight of 12% moisture content. Oh, God, getting exciting now. There are a handful <laughs> of obscure shrubs and small trees that yield wood, which can be extremely hard. However, these species are typically only available regionally and have never seen the vast majority of woodworkers, nor are they reliably documented in woodworking publications. Mm. Right, because moisture can definitely change mm. wood. Did someone put something interesting in the... Um... Oh, yeah, Black black Locust. Am I going to regret clicking on Will's link? No, it's literally oh. the same site you're on. It's just <laughs> for the Black Locust tree. <laughs> so, um... Oh, God. I the ten like, how hard it is as to, like, how much of what we're saying is, like, genuine or more innuendo. Like, like all of it. All of it. Oh, we I are, think I think we literally. Are, it's a lot lighter than I would have expected. Hmm. And also, to be fair, the birds offered up lots more innuendo than the hardwoods. Mm. Yeah. In all fairness, yeah. Hmm. Hardwoods, yeah. To well. approve the term American cock in the in the what's chat. What's the softest? What's, what's the softest wood? The softest wood. I don't know. Do you want to <laughs> give us a, give us? A, I I don't necessarily want to Google this on stream. Because people can see it, but <laughs> but Matt, do you want to do you want to take that one for us? Pine's pretty sure. soft. I think beech is pretty soft. Hmm. I don't think there's anything. First of all, I'd like to I'd like to it's point out that the, <gasps> tissue the paper between the difference between hard and soft wood has zero to do with hardness. Is the first result? Uh, excuse me, no. <laughs> 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 oh, Scratch OS in the, in the chat says the next report is going to be the old report. <laughs> <laughs> What's the oldest one? The oldest one. Uh, no, I think we can't have that. That might actually be interesting. What's the oldest tree? The oldest tree. I guess it would be interesting. I'm just in like. Sorry, what was that, Jenny? I'm thinking the oldest game might be too interesting. Mm. Like, what's the oldest person or the oldest animal? That, be, we'll been... Yeah, because that, that would just be a history podcast, and we're not smart enough for that kind of thing. <laughs> the technical <laughs> knowledge tree yep. that produces seeds without any sort of covering is gymnosperm, a term derived from ancient Greek, which literally translates to naked seed. <laughs> Naked seed. I know, well, I'm looking. Well, obviously, I know. If, if it's from ancient Greece, then if it's you said it was gymno. No, is that what you said it was? Yeah, that's what it says. Here we go. The softest wood in the world belongs to that's, the. If it's from Greece, Quipo tree, C U I P O, mm -hmm. which has a rating of just twenty two lbf. Okay. I don't know what that means. Pounds Honestly, we forest. should have worked out what LBF means before before the set. Well, I which, should have worked which it out. Makes it, which makes it drastically softer than the balsa wood, which has a higher but still very low rating of 100 well, LBF. Oh. Not the wood report, so, yeah. mm, this is, that is true. We are not the wood report. That is, uh, that's, a, that's a whole different podcast. We're talking about softness and hardness. Mm, this is the hard report. But, I mean, like, balsa wood is pretty soft. I mean, they, well, they use it to... Also you have classified as a hardwood over hard metal? Balsa like, wood is hard. classified as a hardwood. I was classified as a hardwood, Matt. Balsa wood. Balsa wood? Yeah. Oh. Mm, oh, dear. And so is... And so is... Quip... 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 Oh, I don't know how to say... Quip... 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 Are you having a stroke? Quip... <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I just don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> the hardest wood is said to come from the Australian Buloki. No, bull oak. Sorry, it's not pronounced. It just says it says pronounce bull oak in parentheses right after I said it wrong. With a <laughs> now you cheated Chris's game. <laughs> Five thousand six. The LBF. Oh, <laughs> that is quite a number. Right. That's some. Um, that's no. That's why they're called the bull oak. That is a load of bull oaks to me. Oh uh, dear. Oh dear. Bollocks. Bollocks. I was going to say, he sounds like a good bloke. Oh. 
<laughs> there you go. We've got a family-friendly yeah. version of that joke. Cool. So Australia <laughs> has the hardest yeah. word. My, my go-to is turning dirty jokes into family-friendly jokes. I do this a lot at work by accident. If anybody ever, if anybody ever meets you from Australia, <laughs> then this, I know that your country has the hardest wood. <laughs> Great. All right, so at the risk of getting stuck on something far too interesting, the hardness of various woods, um, I've got a final... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a final. Uh, On that note, there, I, I looked it up. There are a variety of wood podcasts out there by people who know what they're talking to that about. So if you thought this was was entertaining, like maybe maybe look at that, one of those. If you've come yeah. to this podcast <laughs> to learn about wood, you've come to the wrong the place. wrong place. To be honest, if you've come expecting any degree of coherency, quality, correct facts, um, worthy opinion, you're really um, in the wrong place. Too. To be honest. Hey, hey. With a pencil. Chris, I could be wrong. Definitely disappointed all of a sudden. <laughs> but hasn't this channel produced two excellent documentaries? <laughs> <laughs> You're right, it has. What you was are correct. Time? Alien Area 51? <laughs> you are correct, yes. You are correct. And a, um, and, and a number of uh, charity videos, most notably yeah. the uh, I Am Comic Sans. Mm. Oh, we are the, we, perfect we place are, to come to learn. It we is. Are the yes. uh, advocate defenders of the comic sand. Mm. We die on that uh, Yeah. Yep. Um, we've, we've got to stop the mass genocide of fonts, guys. We've got to stop it now. We've got to, well, comic <laughs> sand. I mean, to be fair, I think comic you know, sand. Yeah, going after the papyrus. It's a shame. Yeah, but comic. I know. What's like papyrus is going to be the next endangered font. It is, but I think I think Comic and Sans I like Papyrus. Is Comic Sans is pretty endangered Papyrus. nowadays, isn't it? I think we should Papyrus. re re relaunch the campaign to save Comic Sans. Oh man, Papyrus might should, very should, seriously be my favorite Sans. SNL skit. We should just make <laughs> Comic Sans our official sponsor of this podcast. I mean, <laughs> if nobody else wants it, right? I don't know how we'd get that but that, That's kind of like doing a charity thing, but like being like. Uh, our Help the Dolphin charity is sponsored by dolphins. Like... <laughs> <laughs> so next time on uh, what is this podcast chronicle, we will yeah. talk about the history of Comic Sans. <laughs> the history of Comic <laughs> Sans. That is a good one, actually. The, his the history. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm... Sorry, I got to... <laughs> <laughs> The history of Comic Sans. We're doing it. The yeah. history of Comic Sans. Oh, before Comic Sans is gone from all the hate mm. it has and all the flack it's received over the past few years. Mm. It, it, well, the past few decades. Being so abused. Yeah, it's been longer than years. It is. I think it was released in about 1995. <laughs> so, 94. Ah, okay. That's the year I was born. See? Mm. That was perfect for me. Oh wow! You could be the mascot of Comic Sans. <laughs> we're like dressed up as as a Comic Sans letter. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, I literally am Comic Sans. <laughs> I can walk around. I am Comic Sans. I will seek my revenge. We are Comic Sans. We are, we are Comic Sans. Um, okay. I um, came it, off so sincere during that final bit of that video because I forgot what I was meant to say, so it kind of came out like I was getting too emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we are Comic Sans, and it sounded like I was going to cry, but it was just because I was like, am I? Is it a we or an I? <laughs> oh, I'm so happy, so happy with how that video came out. Oh, wonderful. All right, well, hey, we've got a segment for next 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 week, so I'm, more, I'm pretty happy. So... So you gonna do uh, fastest, slowest, hardest, softest? Oh no, we can't do all of that. That's far too much. Um, I'll, I'll well, do... obviously we'll have to walk and rotate. So, like, we have now like the fast, slow, hard, soft thing, and now we have histories of things Comic. that don't matter. And uh, 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 don't excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Comic Sans. Comic Sans is very important. <laughs> It's an endangered font. <laughs> it is. It's going to be red listed now. Mm, yeah, you might upset Fita. 
Oh, my bad. <laughs> so, um... Anyway. <laughs> like, we would... Like, it just sounds um, we... so different to what you did. Like, oh, just I'm just like, confused well. about... <laughs> I'm just confused about what that might stand for. Yeah, because <laughs> I haven't because changed the, the right letter. Is for people. <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to. I'll, have, <laughs> I'll work that one out. So anyway, yeah. in terms write a ter document in comic sans. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, yeah. Um. Uh, so anyway, in terms of wrapping this up, I, I had an I had an idea, and I quite like this idea. So, uh, basically, on the internet, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, the World Wide Web. Um, there are a whole load of like musical artists who release their music for free um, f under various different sort of conditions. Some of them release it for free for non-commercial products. Some of them just release it and don't care what you do with it and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I'm I'm quite fond of just trawling through old internet libraries of these this you know of, of various songs that bands have put out or musicians have put out that uh, they you know they have no intention of ever monetizing or um, or even like getting you know publicizing their music. There's a lot. There's a whole world of hidden music which is kind of kind of interesting. And and I, I perhaps I'm I'm not I'm I'm doing a little bit of an injustice because I don't think the music is deliberately hidden away. It's just you know it's it's not publicized by massive record labels. Um, and it's and it's made for the love of the song and the music itself. So, um. What I would like to do at the end of every episode is to present you guys with a song that I think is quite nice, and then um, and then just sort of as as a as a way to round off the podcast, we can just have a bit of have a bit of a chat about it and and just like enjoy it if 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 you enjoy it if if that's the thing. So okay. um, okay. So what I've got here is uh what's going up on the, on the 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 internet bit now is the band camp page for um a, an artist called patricia taxon um and i'm going to be playing a song there so i'm going to put the link to it in the old uh chat there that people can also see so um what I'll, what we'll do i might work out a better way to do this but at the moment i can only think of doing it the 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 the, the, the shitty way no that's not fair not a great way, right? This is this is this is the ad hoc do it on the hoof way, right? Um, the, the way that matches our podcast quality. Yeah, yeah. A way that, that's a great way of putting it, Matt. That's a great way of putting it. <laughs> so, and the song on the list is called Monster. It's number nine, right? So, if we press play all at the same time, we can then enjoy it together and then have a chat. And I'll make sure that the good folks watching live can also play it. So, have you guys got the band camp page up? Um, mine went wonky. Hold on. Okay, not to worry. So, oh, and just as a bit of a, um, as, as a bit of a background for this, um, this is a pre-transition album. So, uh, the the voice will be sound more masculine than you might expect from someone called Patricia Taxon, because um, they've they've since then transitioned. But um, it's a still a, a you know it's a, it's a wonderful song so i don't know just bear that in mind in case you thought it, 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 there was a bit of confusion around it i haven't m messed up that's okay. it's designed to be like that <laughs> right okay right. cool are we all good or is falcon still yeah no i'm ready now we're all ready okay all systems go so yeah monster track number nine I'm going to go three, two, one, go, and then you click on go, right? Just because I know people screw that one up, don't they? they so sometimes go they go, on go or go on three. Go on go. It wouldn't be go on three. Okay. <laughs> well, some people do that. They say on go, and then they go one, two, three, and they take action on three. So oh, right. go on go. Well, well on first three. off, okay. I'm going to count backwards. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> okay. But also, I'm All not right. going to go on one. I'm going to go on go. Okay, great. Brilliant. Okay. All clear on that All one? Right, Excellent. Okay. One, two, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm just I'm just screwing around. All right, three, two, one, go. All I want is to feel your cheek as it touches mine. 
place my chest on yours Save our precious time You're a monster in the closet But ever since we've met I've never been afraid of anything I can repair So grow your beard out Ignore what the others say Grow your beard out Put a little fur on your face I can't stop thinking about how nice it will feel When my lips touch yours So grow your beard out There's nothing wrong with a man that you can pet You said that you're still waiting Still fearful of what's next Your connections are all severed And you communicate by text You're a monster in the closet But ever since we've met I've never been afraid of anything I can pet So grow your beard out Ignore what the others say Grow your beard out Put a little fur on your face I can't stop thinking about how nice it will feel When my lips touch yours So grow your beard out There's nothing wrong with the man that you can pet Oh, good. Nice. Back on for a bit. Hmm. Oh, that was nice. I really like that one. I listened to it quite nice. a lot, actually. So, yeah, I thought that'd be a nice way to, to sort of round off and just have a have a bit of a chat and uh, about the song. 
and then you know just sort of it it can peter off into into something yeah. <laughs> 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 so um so yeah i found that That's song very nice. and um and i just liked it and the, uh, the the album is very varied and i like quite a few of the songs on there as well um, and it's and that's the thing I like about music, and that's I think one of the things I like I lo- that sort of got me sucked into the heavy metal rabbit hole is like I like unusual stuff, stuff with a bit of novelty, stuff that's a bit weird. Um, yeah. So yeah, and uh, if anyone watching or any of you folks, of course, have like any suggestions on something like that, then um, yeah, send them my way. Hooray! Um, awesome. So right. guys, uh. Thank you for joining me on today's journey because it's. <laughs> You're welcome. I've had a hoot and. It's been fun. I I want to do I wanted to get Podcast Chronicle off the ground again because, um, ah, it gives me an excuse to spend time with you and it gives me an excuse to put something up on the on the pod, on the Project Chronicle channel because, um, it uh, well we actually to be fair a fair amount of content does go up there I mean. It's only recently that the Gmod video we ran out of Gmod videos. <laughs> <laughs> they were great. I Whoa, we finally ran out. Really we funny. finally ran out of Gmod. Oh man, those are the videos. I thought they were an infinite source. Well, there's a lot of them. Like, there's, look, there's over a <laughs> hundred of them. Though. Oh yeah, we played a lot of it. And, All right, I gotta, I gotta go do some yeah, stuff. Wasn't good content either. <laughs> I, I bid, I bid thee farewell. All right, you take care, Matt. Thanks Peace, man. All right. Round it off. Um, strong. So <laughs> <laughs> Make <right>. it worse. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, like the thing about the Gmod videos is I do go back to them and watch them. And I don't think there's any content I've ever put out that I do that with except for the Gmod videos. I think I think they're just wonderful. I think they came out fantastically. They were I, just, you know, being silly and us being silly and having fun. So I think that oh, and that, that definitely shows. But I think if it's 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 more entertaining for us to watch it. Maybe, yeah, but that that's the thing. <laughs> it was like, a good time. Yeah, I mean, ever since I demonetized all my videos um, and my Twitch and everything, I completely demonetized everything. My mindset has completely gone back to. 2012 YouTube uh, or two, you know uh, in that era and it's wonderful I'm, I'm enjoying every second of it and it's it's the sort of this the part of me that's like I don't care how many views a video gets it's literally about you know what I think about it at the end of the day which is how it really should be when it comes to this kind of stuff um, because it leads you know the money thing it leads you down a rabbit hole it pulls you in different directions even slightly sometimes without even knowing it and all this kind of stuff um, and and there's been some like demonetization news in the YouTube world because of the kids advertising. Uh, any of you guys familiar with that? About yeah. the, the, the what? So there's been a there's been a. Um... So basically. Go ahead, Jenny. If you if you. Uh, Google you, Google slash YouTube have been massively sued um, because they've been advertising to children who can't differentiate the difference between. Um, like ads and products, they mm. can't emotional maturity to work out they'll be able to purchase them. Um, and apparently that's against guidelines for child protection in the US. So that's been a massive thing. So like a huge number of kids-focused channels will no longer get monetized or be completely demonetized. Even the ones that are like kids buying, like reviewing stuff, because um, they can't. There's no way to differentiate what is sponsored and what is non-sponsored in a way that kids can grow. Uh, that's something that happened in the last week. It was like a big, big court case. Yeah. And I feel I, like that's a, about it. Why, maybe like a month, uh, two months ago, there was something about like a, a bunch of like younger YouTubers were getting kicked off because like people with bad intentions were watching their content. And that was a, a big thing too for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I th- part of that I think comes, and I think YouTube are realizing this uh, slowly that that mixing in children's content with adult content is not a good idea in general. Like, there's a reason why here in the UK, I'm, I, I guess it's, I believe it's the same in most other countries where when you have children's programming, you have it on children's channels. 
that you have a yeah. high, high degree yeah. of, of of moderation in that regard. Now, my my guess, but I could um, easily be do wrong. We still run by the watershed. Do we still run by the watershed? I believe so, but um, I assume I'm, we do. Yeah, I think so. But of course, with the internet, you don't get that. You. So yeah, obviously. Um, and that's and I, and I think this might might very well be part of it. It's, it's it is more difficult to to moderate, and there, there's like an advertising element. There's a child safety element to it, and I think there's also a targeted advertising uh, element to it. I think part of the court case was around the data that is collect the advertising data that's collected on children as well. Um, so um, I'm not fully clued up on it. So feel free to point out. Or feel the internet can feel free to point out uh, anything you know wrong in what I'm saying here, but um, as I understand it, like the thing is, YouTube makes huge money off these kids' channels, huge money. So they'll work something out. Um, they may not make as much money as they used to, but I, you know, I, I don't think Ryan Toys Review are going to be. They're not going to be, you know, going homeless or anything but, anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, have you seen like the, the the kind of views that they pull in? Are, um, I think they're more than PewDiePie actually in terms of views, um, or because um, uh, when because the thing is about YouTube um, is that the number of subscribers is not really a a good indicator of anything really, um, because channels that have been around for a long time like mine will collect a large number of subscribers over the course of many years. But but people who were watching me five years ago, are the chances of them still watching me now, very slim. But there's a few. But um, you know, like people I move know. on. That's the. Um, I, well, I don't know, Jenny. I mean, you you you're, you've been you've been on 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 the platforms for a while. But I think in your case, some of your core fan base right, have actually stayed with you over over years, haven't they? There's, there's a few of them. There's a few of them. But obviously, there's I have much fewer subscribers than you do anyway. So. My core audience is is very uh, alarmingly loyal to the point of um, like I feel like you need to find content. <laughs> but I <laughs> I am not supposed to be watching. Your loyalty is incredibly kind, but like I'm not that entertaining, guys. But the thing is, Jenny, is like I I t I take a fair <laughs> amount of inspiration from your way of doing things, and it's kind of in a way what I want to get back to doing. I know it sounds ridiculous, but. It's like you, you are, you know, you've got a lo-fi way of doing things. You just sit in front of a camera. You don't do fancy edits and jump cuts and all that kind of thing. You're just very real. And um, like, you know, 2010 YouTube, I want to get back to that, you know, where not everything. And someone left a comment. I think it was someone called uh, one of my uh, subscribers called Skazius. And they talk about how every other video on YouTube now is like uh, an advert for Audible or Squarespace or, you know, that kind of thing. And it's like, mm, yeah. You know, some channels have creative ways of blending it in, but at the end of the day, you know, we're going down this route of, of while still in many cases having quite a lot of indie creators, um, sort of... It, it, Talking of which, how much advertising revenue does Squarespace and um, Audible <laughs> have? Because I swear they're on every single they channel. Are. Like, how much, how much, what, what is that? Budget? That's ridiculous. Mm. Oh, actually, and like, um, it, it was yeah. like, um, what, what was the shaving? It was like Dollar Shave Club. That was thinking like a couple years ago that was on yeah. every channel. Yeah. Mm. Are they still in business or did they get this? Um, I don't know. I don't they want a lot of competition now, though. I'm sure it's a thing. Dollar Shave Club. I'm sure it's still a thing, but I, yeah, I know that there's not a lot of Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, well, Audible set. is everywhere. Squarespace is everywhere. Um, yeah. Start. They must have a good good back budget. I don't know how mm. they made well, that budget. I don't I don't know about Squarespace. Well, Squarespace has actually been doing it for like a long time. But like Audible has Amazon mm. money. They can pay for all the ads mm. they want. That is true. And also I Spedies, yeah. Spedies, Spedies. That uh, is true. Yeah, or they have they do have Amazon money. And Amazon of course being one of 2 trillion dollar companies now. That's I I, I think so. Isn't it? Apple and Amazon they're the 2 trillion dollar companies out there. Man, trillion dollars that's an no unfathomable idea. amount. That's a thousand billion and a billion is a thousand million and a million is a thousand thousand. 
So that's there you go. That's I mean, can you imagine? I feel Have, poor all of a sudden. <laughs> no. <laughs> to be fair, like Richard Branson probably feels poor compared to to that. So you know, that's something you got in common with Richard Branson. So <laughs> you know. <laughs> But um get that audible money. Mm. Um but yeah, it's it's like um the whole lo fi thing is something I want to bring back and it's one of those things where it's like I don't care if it gets fewer views or whatever, it's like it's you know, it's not contingent on anything to do with my life right about now. Um so there's literally zero point in doing anything for money on YouTube, and I've deliberately severed that tie for a, for a bunch of reasons. And fortunately enough, my my network, uh, my contract's up like early next year, so I, I'll have a chat with them about whether or not they want to continue because at the moment they're just providing me with a t-shirt shop that I've yet to open and a soundtrack <laughs> library that I'll never use um, for ad revenue they'll never get. So <laughs> it's like. <laughs> I don't know. We might as well just uh, part, you know, separate. But they've been very understanding that, you know, they they say that I'm under no obligation to 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 you know crank up the ads or anything, which is nice. Um, so, but it has it's changed my 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 sort of frame of view, and um and and, and I, I love it. So yeah. I, I uh, just I never progressed out of my first style. My first style was, oh crap, my camera's going to run out of space dust battery in five minutes. I don't have editing software. Let's just do it. <laughs> and I never, I never progressed. I never evolved. I still am. Um, oh crap, five minutes, just talk. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, Was that I don't know, um, but yeah, it's um, but but it works, uh, you know. I think it works, and and but but a lot of YouTubers like that. Like a lot of YouTubers started on cameras that only ran for a couple of minutes. Uh, my first camera, I think, had worked for about seven minutes on on the internal battery. So um, and the, the sound was terrible. Um, but um, and 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 to be fair, the there's a there's a channel called I think it's called Big Joel, who did a video on like small youtuber culture and um and that was fascinating i did kind of want to do a sort of a a take on small youtuber culture on off the you know as a result of that video but i never really uh managed to add anything that, that he didn't say so it sort of dwindled and went out but the 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 difference approach the different approaches that small youtubers have to the platform is really interesting in terms of like some of them want to get big some of them just want to do their own thing um and i've got like some i've still got some hangover metrics in my head where i will consider something to be popular if it reaches a certain number of views or a channel to be a certain amount of you know to, to categorize a channel based on the number of subscribers um but but not to a point where it actually changes anything that i'm doing so um, anyway that's yeah so it's um yeah, but that that comment, particularly by Skazius, really did sort of put things in perspective. That like, yeah, there's a, there's a lot, lot of um, advertising on the internet, a lot of overproduced stuff, and I like a lot of overproduced stuff. You know, I'm not I'm not complaining that there's a lot. You know, like um, there's plenty of you know YouTube's my primary form of entertainment, and there's plenty of good content on there. Uh, in fact, there's a a, a a YouTuber that I watch called Variax who does gameplay videos. Um, I w very, very sort of pretty niche. He's been on I don't know how many subscribers he's got now, but like a couple of you know, like less than thirty thousand or something. Um, but he's been doing the same stuff now since uh, two thousand nine. So yeah, like ten years. Um, which is uh, which is fascinating. So um, yeah. anyway, guys. Well, the thing I discovered this week, Twitter for 10 years. I didn't even know Twitter had been around for 10 years. Like, that blew my mind. <laughs> Minecraft came out like, years ago now, too. They just had their 10 year, I think. Oof. Mm. We're old. We are, we're old back in my day. Well, there we go. We could have a back in my day section of the podcast as well. Do, oh, do you remember <laughs> when Ray William Johnson was, you know, equals three? I liked equals three. I don't think, I think, yeah, I, I, I know he wasn't everyone's taste, but like, 
Ray, yeah, Ray William Johnson's Equals 3 was kind of amusing. I might go back and watch some old ones there, because they're like, you know, he's got viral videos from the archives there. Um, now I'm trying to figure out when I uploaded my first video. Oh. <laughs> I deleted so many of my videos that, like... Oh, no one can see them. <laughs> <laughs> I listed some, but I mostly deleted it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. December 26th, 2011. Oh. Was that, pro that was Project Chronicle then? That must be when you started. No. This no? was apparently me and my brother playing Oddworld Stranger's Wrath on Xbox. Wow. <laughs> nice. It's the oldest video I have on YouTube. My YouTube channel is from 2012. To be clear okay, here, I, I need to look this up. <laughs> this isn't well, game captured. It's literally <laughs> a camera pointed at a TV. Oh, Matt's got a video like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bravo. Bravo. High quality. That High is, quality that is, yeah, yeah. PewDiePie's got nothing on you. My, I did find my <laughs> sister's old. So my sister started her YouTube channel before me. Um, and I found two two of her old videos got suggested to me. Oh wow! Um, recently, and tabletop was like her a motion thing that she did blue tack on her desk. <laughs> um, so my first video was two thousand and eleven, mm -hmm. January twenty fifth, two thousand and eleven. Um, but like I think her video was like two thousand and nine. I think she she was way back, um, and then she stopped doing videos. But she she started before me, and I copied her. Mm. And now you're the successful one. Gosh, she must be better. Uh, she's the, doc she's the doctor. She's <laughs> <laughs> uh, Right. So uh, anyway, this is uh, this is probably a good time to at least wrap up the podcast element of it. So, um, but we'll 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 hang out for as you know as long as as whenever. But. Um, it really yeah. got away from us. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. we got it. We got We'll curve it off. Um. Uh. But yeah. So that's yeah. That's episode one. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for you guys. Time, what could be a segment? Yeah. The um, old YouTube. Yeah, like YouTube nostalgia. Yeah, YouTube nostalgia. Oh, sure. badger, badger, mushroom. Yeah. I oh wow. I made, a, I made a reference to that the other day. And one of my friends had never seen it. <laughs> and like banana phone. Oh my god. Yeah. So it's weird because my parents have like a lot of foster kids, and like a few of them are very young, and thought something I was watching was weird. So I pulled up Badger, 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 <laughs> and they were like, "Yeah, we've seen this." And I'm like, how? You're six. Well, what do you mean you've seen the this? The grape one. You got to show them the grape one. They'd seen that? No. Most I'm like, how? This my... is older than you. <laughs> most of my colleagues I work with now, most of my colleagues, they were born in 2001. And that depresses me so much. <laughs> Sorry, did you say born in the 2000s? <laughs> Born after two thousand and one. What? Yeah. Most wow. of my part timers are in sixth form. Oh, I don't so, know so what they're, that they're, means. They're sixteen to eight. Sixteen to eight years old. So some of them were two thousand and three. <laughs> oh my god. Mm. All right. Well. <laughs> On on that bombshell, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the um, the outro. We did an intro. We might as well wrap it up with an outro. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, guys, for joining us. And um, I'm hoping to do this weekly. But because we are a crap podcast, we may m m miss a week from here and there. You know. Um, and to be honest, I'm gonna try for it. Even even if it means me standing here just wittering on, blithering on like a mad idiot. Then you know, so be it. I'm gonna, you know, don't don't raise your expectations, people at home. It's just gonna be just okay, right? Just 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 putting I that out there. We'll, we'll, I'll probably do. 
now that we've got a something that resembles a framework then then there's a possibility it might get better but like don't bet the farm on it okay <laughs> that's right. not our intention that's not our intention that'll be the next, the next new segment we do is things you should not bet <laughs> oh <laughs> the farm your house the farm <laughs> Uh, okay, right. And in uh, outro. Broadcast Chronicle.